Okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit about my plan for a series on the monom all f. I'm actually really excited about this. One of the main reasons that I started the channel was to talk about all f and try to explore some of what it has to offer. So, the first thing that I'd like to talk about is what all f is. And there's actually quite a bit of information on the monom side about it. Basically, it's kind of anything that you want it to be, but from a functional standpoint, it is a lot of different audio effects, instruments, and building blocks for interacting with audio and or control voltage. Looking at the existing code can give a really good sense of the options that are already available. Right now, there are delays, synthesizers, other effects, and a really interesting set of tools in the form of Bs Ops. But really, it could be almost any audio tool that you want it to be, and that's kind of one of the reasons that I'm so interested in it. So, in addition to what is already included or available, all F is a learning tool for digging into how to create your own effects, synthesizers, etc. in a compact, self-contained package. Although I think all F is great and unique, there are other similar options available, so I guess then the question becomes, why all F? Many of the alternatives are a lot easier to find, especially because it seems like only 100 all F units were actually made, and they are kind of tough to get a copy of in order to work with. I guess one reason is because, like many other monom creations, there is a lot of helpful documentation. We have access to information, reference, and tutorials and all of this stuff exists, and is really complete, and that really helps to get a sense of how to use what's already there and the paradigm for actually working with all F. Another and maybe even bigger reason is because, although there are some, arguably more easy to obtain, maybe potentially easier to work with similar kinds of products out there. All F is completely open source. Completely. You can easily download the project files from GitHub. You can look at them. You can get familiar with them and use them as the basis for experimentation and building new things. It's just really awesome, it really is. Another really interesting and helpful aspect of All F is that Monom has also made all of the information for the hardware available too. So, potentially, you could actually even build an all F unit, and this is really exciting. So I guess another reason is that a lot of all F is actually written in C. All F makes a lot of use of the C programming language. And I think that is really important. If we look at the C programming language page on Wikipedia here, and there's a lot of interesting stuff in here I think. The most interesting part of this whole page is in the uses section. I think that this graphic kind of says it all. Because, in a lot of ways, C is at the core of many things. Maybe not 100% of everything, but a ton of tools and solutions make use of the C programming language. Especially embedded systems and many Linux-related tools and solutions, and knowledge of C is just incredibly useful. So interacting with C in the context of Aleph is one good way to level up in terms of C skills. Will it be possible to do programming for the Linux kernel just based on figuring out C in the context of Aleph? Well, maybe not. But it will provide a very good idea of how C works in a variety of contexts, especially audio. The preparations that will have to be undertaken in order to work with Aleph, and the skills that can be developed in order to build stuff for it and figure out how it works, especially for people like me without a formal tech background, are going to be applicable to a lot of other projects. And I think that building the knowledge of how to do this stuff in C is going to be very helpful for a variety of other projects. Even though I can only write crummy C right now, and adapt other code that I find online, the reason that I got interested in C initially was because I wanted to work with Aleph. And thanks to working with Aleph and building a knowledge of C, I have been able to create many non aleph related solutions that I also hope to cover in other videos on this channel. So, yes. Aleph is and could be a really interesting effects box, or a way to create some kind of interesting synthesizer or something. But, the larger implications of working with Aleph, for me, revolve around the idea of being able to do a lot with the knowledge that can be gained or built through working with it. And, again, because the design is so fantastic, and because everything is so well documented and all the code is available. It's a lot of fun to work with. Mutable Instruments also seems to provide another, similar kind of environment or paradigm. Unfortunately, I don't have anything by mutable instruments yet, but again, that's another option that will allow a user to do development in an audio context, but it's also so much more than that. The implications of it are so much bigger than just learning how to build new modules for a synthesizer. Though there is obviously nothing wrong with that. 
So I guess at this point I would sort of like to go over my series plan or roadmap for the series on Aleph on this channel. And I have a couple items. I plan to do them pretty much in this order, but it sort of depends. For one, the C that I write is still pretty crummy. And I'm not going to say that I've mastered working with Aleph by any means. For me, this is a long haul project, and I plan to hopefully be working on this for quite a while. So I guess the first thing that I'd like to do is talk about setting up a development environment. On the GitHub site, and in the other documentation too, they present information on development setup. Monome has provided the steps, and it seems like they are presenting information on how to set the development environment up in Ubuntu Desktop. Using Ubuntu Desktop, if that is what they are suggesting, I may have misunderstood, is a great idea. Personally though, I don't really use normal desktop Ubuntu very much. It's a little bit heavy for what I normally do, and the equipment I have available, and I've had some issues with it in the past, so using the normal desktop Ubuntu is not something that I would probably do. For this channel, I want to kind of talk about setting up a development environment outside of that, and some of the things that I've run across because, as the Aleph did come out a little while ago now, realizing that there has been ongoing development with it, some of the libraries can take a few extra steps or some extra considerations to get set up to work with. Especially depending on the selected development environment. Recently, and this is something that I'm going to use as the topic of the development environment video, I've been working on setting up a wiki that includes development environment setup information on my GitHub page. Probably the video that I make will focus on Ubuntu server. I actually like that pretty well, and it can be set up very easily. Initially I set up an Arch Linux environment, and that is what I have primarily been using. But because Arch is a rolling distro, and because kernel updates can remove support for older versions of GCC, I wanted to come up with an alternate, more stable solution. I plan to talk more about both of them in the development environment video though. I am also planning on looking at everyday use. Again, there are a lot of very helpful tutorials on the Monom site. I'll definitely be looking at some of the topics in here. I don't plan to go over these verbatim, but the everyday use topic will include information from these. I am planning on mainly focusing on my takeaways from reading these and using the unit. I am pretty sure this will be a topic that takes more than one video, especially because, hopefully, I will gain a better understanding of Aleph over time. DSP module programming is actually the thing that I am most interested in. And I have actually been trying to work on that. I've been working on some mods, just kind of to get an idea of how the whole thing works. And yes, they are really crummy. They're just working versions, and I hope to kind of increase the quality of these as I go. In terms of bees, to be honest, I think that the ops that are already available are very solid, and, overall, I think bees is pretty comprehensive. Having a look at the code and documentation, it was difficult for me to come up with anything that I could potentially add. But I would definitely like to cover some of the ops. I do have a couple ideas for an op or two that I'd like to try. Finally, and hopefully, hardware. I think this is going to be very difficult, but the reason is because, again, only so many of these things exist right now in the wild. It is possible, if you're very lucky and keep an eye on places that would handle these kind of things to get an Aleph unit, but collector prices can definitely make things a bit difficult. I think that it would be really nice, not necessarily from a sales standpoint, but just from a use standpoint to have a few more units out there. Many other solutions, like Teensy or Arduino, are a lot easier to get your hands on, and I think that may contribute to a larger user base and more available code that users can examine. Also, like Monom points out in their overview, there's so much potential for collaboration and the more units that are out in the world, the more people are going to have access to them and hopefully want to do development. Personally, I would also really like a backup unit or a way to create a backup unit just in case something happens to the one that I already have. I would really like to continue working with Aleph in the future and especially given chip life cycles and things, I think it might be good to try and figure out how to do this sooner rather than later. So that's what I'd like to focus on in terms of hardware. On a related note, you can actually get the bill of materials because Monom has been really awesome and made all that information open source as well. Here is the spreadsheet. And while information on where to purchase is provided, you can also do web searches with the part numbers to see where they are available for purchase with lower minimum order quantities. I did some preliminary investigations and it looks like the Blackfin chip is still available. I believe this is the right part number. I'll have to check again. I know that I did find it on Mauser before. 
So far, the biggest stumbling block for me in sort of my initial investigations was that the microcontroller is also available. But unfortunately, minimum order quantities, which I completely understand, especially when chip shortages and other issues are occurring put this. Well. Yikes. So I guess, I'm hopeful about, while the chips are still available, being able to get my hands on some of them and hopefully in the future, actually trying to build one of these things, but again, that's sort of an ideal goal, and I just don't know if I'll get there, but I'd really like to. So that is the overview for where I hope to go with the series, and I'm planning on making new videos as I'm able. Thank you for listening.